Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the first in a series of four community informational webinars to provide you some information regarding the Virginia Mathematics Pathways Initiative. My name is Tina Mazakane. I am the K-12 Mathematics Coordinator at the Virginia Department of Education. Um, our session tonight will be focused on introducing the Virginia Mathematics Pathways Initiative. And we're going to discuss some of the catalysts that have prompted why changes in math instruction are being considered. I'm very pleased to be accompanied by two members of our Virginia Mathematics Pathways Initiative leadership team, and I will let them introduce themselves now. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Dave Barnes. I'm the parent of two kids, a high schooler and a middle schooler. And I also am a former math teacher and work for the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jennifer Allard. I am a former high school math teacher and currently high school math curriculum specialist in Fairfax County Public Schools and also the parent of a fifth grader in our public schools. Great, thank you. Um, we're excited to have everyone join us tonight. Uh, we want to let you know that this webinar is being live streamed, as you probably know. Uh, we welcome your questions and your feedback as we progress through this presentation. So um, there's a QR code you'll see on the screen now and a tiny URL. You're welcome to use either of those to link to a Google form. Um, and that Google form will allow you to make submissions of, of uh, questions or feedback. And there's also a link on that form that takes you to our VMPI webpage, um, which is located on the Virginia Department of Education website. So Jennifer and David and I, along with some of our VMPI and VDOE team members, um, will be reviewing the questions that you submit as the session progresses in the next at the end of the presentation, uh, we're gonna try and um, leave some time to answer some of the questions that, that are posted in there. Um, we do have a series of three additional um, webinars. So if we don't get to all the questions tonight, we can hopefully address those in some of the future webinars that we have. But we're excited to be able to, um, to hear your feedback and your questions. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So shown on the screen, you'll see that it's our agenda for tonight's session. Uh, we're going to start with a brief introduction about VMPI. Uh, we're going to talk about why change mathematics instruction, which is the focus of our session. We want to make it clear that the Virginia Math Pathways Initiative is a proposal. So any future changes to the Virginia Mathematics Standards of Learning and state education policies will include additional opportunities for us to collect feedback from the public and also to collect your questions prior to the implementation of any changes. Tonight, we're gonna to focus on several areas um, to introduce you to the, the initiative. So first, we're gonna talk about some of the opportunities that are available to Virginia to promote positive change in our math education program through the initiative. Then we're gonna look at some of the factors that have prompted the need for change to math instruction in Virginia. And then we're going to discuss how Virginia plans to launch the changes being proposed by the, this initiative. So first we're gonna give you this brief introduction to the Virginia Mathematics Pathways Initiative. It is a joint initiative between the Virginia Department of Education, the State Council of Higher Education for Virginia or CHEV and the Virginia Community College System or VCCS. The initiative seeks to redefine mathematics pathways for students in the Commonwealth to, in order to ensure that math is what students are engaging in that's relevant to what they do in their post-secondary lives. The initiative also recognizes we live in this society that's really saturated with information. And in order to be productive citizens, we must be able to analyze and make decisions about data. So the math pathways are fixed, um, that are fixed and sort students based on perceived ability, oftentimes beginning in elementary school, do have the potential to somewhat limit students' access to advanced math courses and careers in um, STEM fields. So what are some of the catalysts for change? So we wanna talk about a few of the factors. Um, we've summarized four of the most prominent agents for change in this initiative. Uh, the first is equity. Do all children have the same opportunities to engage in relevant and high quality math learning? The second revolves around the math curriculum that children are learning. 
Are they learning the essential math skills that they need to achieve their goals after high school? Whether those goals are to go to college, to a trade school, direct entry into a career, going into the military, whatever they choose to do after um, high school, are, are the, what they're learning meeting their goals? The third catalyst is about mathematics instruction. Are we providing instruction that allows children to reach their potential to learn math at rigorous and deep levels? And the final catalyst is about the structures in math education. Are there components of how we structure math education in offering it and providing math instruction to our children that we could change in order to promote greater opportunity for all our students to learn mathematics? The changes that are being proposed in the VMPI were catalyzed through these and other factors that we'll begin to examine tonight. Before we get too much further along that we did want to make sure you recognize that there is a series of four meetings, including the one tonight. Um, tonight's se session's focused on why change mathematics and education. We'll follow up with an additional three webinars. The next session will be on April 16th and it will focus on the changes proposed in VMPI and how they'll affect the future opportunities of our children. Then on April 27th, we'll focus on the curricular changes uh, centered on the essential math concepts that are being proposed for grades eight through 10. So we'll get a little bit more into some of the curricular pieces on that, on that night. And then we'll follow up on May 25th with our final session that will focus on uh, the, the proposed pathways in grades 11 and 12, uh, when our children will begin to experience more advanced mathematics concepts. So you're certainly invited to join us for each and every one of these sessions. We hope that you do. Um, however, we are going to be recording these sessions and they will be posted on um, as links on our Virginia Mathematics Pathways Initiative website. And again, we, we remind you that um, you can access a Google form uh, that has that link along with an opportunity for you to submit um, questions and feedback using the little tiny URLs that you'll see at the bottom of some of the screens as we progress through. Or if you have a QR reader on your phone, you can, you can access it that way as well. So I'm going to turn it over to David and let him talk a little bit um, about how math can prepare students for the future. Thanks, Tina. Um, the Virginia Math Pathways Initiative works to recognize that our kids are growing up in a world that really is drastically different from the one that we may have grown up in 20 or 30 years ago, or in my case, even more. Um, that future that our kids are facing includes opportunities for jobs that may not even exist today. The math content and the type of instruction that our students need to succeed and participate in this quantitative world um, is what we needed to examine. You know, the mathematics of old, we needed more because the world's different now. The COVID-19 pandemic has provided many opportunities um, to recognize how every citizen in our society really has to have the skills and dispositions to change and pivot in times of uncertainty and challenge. And in cases we see, you know, understand data and graphs and sort of make decisions. VMPI seeks to examine our existing structures and beliefs about mathematics education and is working toward that. Um, you know, how do we ensure, and this question we ask is, how do we ensure that we're providing all students with the mathematics learning experiences that can prepare them for future success in the ever-changing world we live in? Um, in this next part of our presentation, we'll begin to examine some of the opportunities that we have for making sure that all students graduate from, from Virginia's public education system with a firm foundation of mathematical understanding to propel them forward in the future. As a reminder, if you would like to submit questions or feedback, use that QR code or the tiny URL at the bottom of the screen to access the Google form um, and submit your questions or comments there. Um, also, on that form, there's a link at the very top where you can jump to the Virginia Mathematics Pathways webpage and gain more information about that, our project. So next, we're going to describe the situations of four different students who have attended or graduated from, from Virginia schools and how their experiences in learning mathematics highlight some of the areas that we previously identified as being catalysts for change. 
Somewhere in Virginia, a sixth grader is getting good grades in an accelerated classroom, but doesn't believe that she's a math person because there are times when she really doesn't understand why the answers that she's giving are correct. A high school junior is steered away from taking advanced math courses based on perceptions about her race or family background. Somewhere in Virginia, a high school senior decides not to take a math class because he has met the requirement for graduation and his experience has been that math is not relevant to his future. And somewhere in Virginia, it's the summer after senior year and a student is selecting first semester college courses. While she passed all of her math classes in high school, her college informs her she is not college ready and she has to take math classes that won't earn credits towards her college degree. So each of these student testimonials speaks to one or more of the catalysts for change that we described earlier in the presentation. These catalysts underpin the Virginia Mathematics Pathways Initiative work and promote many of the reasons that change in mathematics education is being considered for Virginia public schools. The catalysts we've discussed don't, are not meant to undermine the great work and learning that's currently happening in our K-12 schools in Virginia. We have many high quality schools, effective teachers and talented students in Virginia. But we have to recognize that there are challenges within our educational system. Many children can and are finding success in the structures that exist in our schools. However, we must consider changes to support improving the learning opportunities for all students. Many of our students do not have access to the mathematics that they will need either in their personal or professional adult lives. The, the issue of inequity in mathematics education makes it essential for us to initiate serious discussions among a variety of stakeholders to achieve the critical mass necessary to catalyze change in school mathematics. All students must have the opportunity to obtain an education in mathematics that will serve them well, regardless of their interests and ambitions. You've heard us use the term equity a few times. How do we define equity in education? Ed Equity Virginia, as part of the Virginia is for Learners, has defined education equity to be achieved when we eliminate the predictability of student outcomes based on race, gender, zip code, ability, socioeconomic status, or language spoken at home. Next, we will transition to examine some of the factors that are indicating a need for changing mathematics education in Virginia. Great, Jen, thank you. Um, you know that we can't do something about math without having some graphs and numbers. So we're gonna next uh, talk to you about some of the, uh, the data that, that we'd like to, uh, to, talk to talk about that helps um, talk about the equitable learning opportunities that we hope can exist for our students. So VMPI uh, seeks to increase those opportunities. It wants to remove barriers in mathematics learning so that all of our kids can achieve their education and career goals. Um, so in, in the next several slides, we'll look at um, data that, that can help us think about um, these, these goals. The infographic that's available on the link that David had talked about in the uh, Google form, uh, where, where you see the, uh, the QR code and the tiny URL, um, has all of these graphs and charts um, that we're going to talk about available, or most of them, so you can hopefully maybe follow along. Um, but this horizontal bar graph shows um, it's the, the represented, it represents the math standards of learning, excuse me, pass rates from 2019 um, in the spring of 2019. So the, the red bar that you see, the 82% is the overall SOL pass rate um, in mathematics. And this represents the average pass rate of all the student test takers. So from grades three all the way through algebra two. And then the bars that, that are shown below that red bar uh, reference the SOL pass rates of students based on various student groups. 
So you can see that there's a difference in achievement among the various student groups. So VMPI seeks to increase opportunities for, for students and, and start to help remove some of the barriers that might exist for learning math uh, for every student in Virginia uh, to help them make sure they're ready for those educational and career goals that, that they set for themselves. So the next graph we're going to look at um, addresses um, uh, data that was collected in 2017-18 uh, from students that were enrolled in two-year public institutions in Virginia taking developmental mathematics. So this is from our Virginia Community College system. You can see that this vertical bar graph, um, it uh, displays data from the 2017-18 um, year, and it shows that um, some of the students from various subgroups and you can see that it's very similar and it paints a picture very similar to what our, our state SOL data presents um, in terms of data. This graph is not on the infographic um, so it's just um, it's just there um, on our presentation here tonight. So next we're going to talk a little bit about a study that was done um, that that it's from 2017 as well, and it examined the first year math courses that students were taking in college. Um, and these are kids that took calculus in high school. So as highlighted on the slide, only about 19% of all the students um, in this study who took calculus in high school actually went on to college and to take um, a higher level calculus course. Uh, the remaining 81% um, of the students took calculus again, or took a different math course in college. So why then this race to calculus? Um, national data really exhibits that approximately 28% of college majors require a course in calculus. And while we certainly think calculus is an important course, and by the way, one of my favorite courses that I took in college, um, and it is needed for many STEM and related fields, um, there's also courses in statistics, mathematical modeling, data science, other technical math um, that are also growing as college level courses that are being required for various majors. So oftentimes we've been holding this pathway to calculus as that which all students should travel. But we need to be having these discussions about are there other rigorous pathways that students might take that lead them to a chosen college or career path. We also want to talk a little bit about statistics and data science. Uh, we recognize students leaving our Virginia K-12 schools may not adequately be prepared for the quantitative demands and the statistical fluency they need to support understanding the world that's all around them, um, as well as making sure that they're ready for those post-secondary and career opportunities. Um, so you'll see on this slide, um, based on some U.S. Bureau of Labor statistics, um, overall um, employment of st statisticians and mathematicians is expected to grow by 33% between 2019 and 2029, uh, which is much faster than the average for all occupations. And we mentioned this data because it really highlights the importance of how statistical fluency uh, needs to be highlighted in our society. And then you'll see on the right, according to the World Bank, um, data is critical to support countries in managing the global coronavirus pandemic. We all are very familiar with all the data that we've been looking at in terms of graphs and charts and, and things as we've gone through this pandemic. Um, we also had a lot of graphs and charts we looked at when we, uh, we were involved in the last um, presidential election. So the importance of being able to have um, our students analyze and think critically about data that they're being presented with is super important and something that we really want to focus on uh, in VMPI. So we're going to talk next about how the VMPI um, is going to be launched alongside um, some parallel initiatives that are already taking place at national levels. Um, and through some existing initiatives in Virginia. So, so David, um, who is with the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, is going to talk about some of those national efforts. So David? Thanks, Tina. There are a number of national efforts that support the work of the Virginia Mathematics Pathway Initiative. The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics and the National Council of Supervisors of Mathematics both work to promote research and practices advocating for these positive changes in math education. Um, we also work with the Conference Board of Mathematical Sciences, an umbrella organization of 17 professional societies, 
in the mathematical sciences across the US. And they hosted a forum of 23, st 23 states um, and Virginia was lucky to be part of that. This work began in May, 2019, which seems like a long time ago. Um, but that work was really to support the efforts of states to create bath better mathematical pathways leading from our K-12 higher ed, leading from K-12 to higher ed and other post-secondary opportunities for, for all students. The Charles A. Dana Center, which is at the University of Texas, Austin, uh, published a report recently titled Launch Years, a new vision for transition from high school to post-secondary mathematics. This report offers seven recommendations that offer concrete strategies to establish policies, practices, and structures that enable students to transition more seamlessly from high school to post-secondary and onto fulfilling careers and active participation in our data-driven society. The report also explains the ways in which these recommendations will lead to more equitable outcomes. So it really is more and better mathematics for all students and increasing their opportunities. And Jen, I think this is you. Um, as we saw on the previous slide, uh, Virginia is not alone in working on examining math education. In addition to working with other states within Virginia, the work we're doing is connected to work that's happening across other disciplines. VMPI is being developed through the lens of the profile of the Virginia graduate, which is a Virginia initiative focused on preparing students to be future ready graduates. The profile of a Virginia graduate emphasizes the importance of focusing on the five C's that you see in this diagram, critical thinking, collaboration, communication, creative thinking, and citizenship skills. Math curriculum needs to better prepare students for success after high school, regardless of their intended career directions. It's not just about the math content, it's about all of these pieces that fit together. The Virginia Math Pathways Initiative also supports a curriculum that is rich and not rushed. Through the development of our mathematics curriculum that drastically reduces the need for acceleration and supports students in heterogeneous classrooms, we can begin to address the inequities that currently exist, but that's without taking anything away from students, it's deepening their knowledge and understanding and giving them opportunities to explore and problem solve. The Virginia Math Pathways Initiative has five main goals. The first one you've heard us talk quite a bit about improving equity in learning opportunities in mathematics for all of our students. Another goal is to empower students to be active participant or participants in a quantitative world. We want to encourage students to see themselves as knowers and doers of mathematics. We want everyone to believe that they are a math person because if you do math, you're a math person, which is everyone in the world. We want to identify K-12 mathematics pathways that support future post-secondary opportunities and success in whatever those opportunities may be for each student. And finally, we're collaborating with multiple stakeholders across a variety of domains and disciplines to advance mathematics education. So during this session tonight, we have discussed um, some of the reasons why we need change in mathematics education and why it's being considered through the Virginia Mathematics Pathway Initiative. A link to the VMPI website where you can locate this infographic can be found on the Google form um, that you can access through the QR code or the tiny link. Um, we have touched on the information included on the front of the infographic tonight. And in some of the following or in the following VMPI community webinars, we'll discuss the remaining information addressed in the infographic. The next VMPI webinar will be held on April 13th and will focus on how mathematics education 
changes proposed in VMPI will work to positively, positively impact children's futures. Hey, David, I also wanted to let people know I inadvertently said April 16th, and it is correct that it's April 13th. So I apologize for mis misstating that, um, but it is April 13th is the correct date. Sorry to interrupt you. That's great. Thank you. The next session after that, our third session on April 27th, will address the proposal of the essential mathematics concepts in grades eight through 10. These are, this is the content that students will learn in those grades to build, and we will be building the mathematics standards of learning, knowledge, and skills for students in those grade levels. And then finally, on May 25th, um, we're excited if you could join us um, to talk about the advanced pathways that, that uh, are being proposed for grades 11 and 12. Um, these, um, these additional pieces you'll find on the back of the infographic. So again, and I know we've said this a couple times, but if you click on the tiny URL or you go to that QR code, there is a Google form with a link at the top that takes you to our VMPI. Um, web page. And on that web page, um, you will see that um, there's a lot of the, the data and, and the opportunities we talked about um, at the beginning of our session. And then on the back, there's additional information about the proposed pathways um, and what those are going to look like. And um, as Jen mentioned, we're going to start with foundational concepts um, that begin in grades K and go through seven, um, and then think about some more essential concepts in grades eight, nine, and 10. Um, and then moving into some of the more advanced math pathways um, that will be available um, in um, grades 11 and 12. So we, we encourage you to kind of check out that infographic and, and take a look at some of the information that's included in there so that uh, you can be a little bit more informed about the initiative. So at this time, we're going to be able to um, take some time to address some of the questions um, that have been submitted on the Google form. Um, and we do have a few. Um, I think that Shelly um, and uh, Kristen have been um, monitoring our chat. There are two VMPI um, colleagues that have been looking at that and looking at what you've been submitting in the Google form. So. Um, we do want to remind you before we start the question and answer session that this link, this Google form is going to be available through May 25th uh, when we hold our last VMPI community webinar. So please um, don't feel like this is your last chance to ask questions or provide feedback. You have um, um, multiple opportunities to do so. So um, Shelly or Kristen, what, what have you got for us for questions? Well, thanks, Tina. Um, the first thing I can answer, um, the question was about, will this be available? So this session is being recorded. It will continue to be available. And so, yes, you can find this information again on our website. We'll post it shortly, but it will always be at this same link that you went to to be here live tonight. Um, when will this initiative begin? Okay, so we're, we're talking timetable then it sounds like. Um, yes, I think that's the question. So um, we're lucky that when we started planning this initiative that it coincides really nicely um, with the revision to the um, Virginia Mathematics Standards of Learning. You might be familiar that we revise um, standards in Virginia on a cycle every seven years. Um, and so our seven year cycle for mathematics is scheduled to be in the year 2023. Um, so once those revised standards are um, approved by the Board of Education, they go through a public review period, uh, so there'll be um, lots of opportunity for folks to provide feedback. Um, we will have a crosswalk year. Um, that'll take place in the year 2024-25, and those, um, those revised standards are typically taught in that crosswalk year along with the existing standards because we have to have time to shift kids from, from one set of standards to the other. Um, so the real, the full implementation is is really planned tentatively for 2025, 2026. And I guess without without a chart, which we'll have in one of our future um, sessions, it's 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 kind of hard to picture if you're a visual person like me. But hopefully that gives you the gist of of the timeline. Thank you, and we'll make sure that that's in one of the next sessions as well. Um, some other questions did come in that really are going, but they're part of the next presentation. So please know that if we are not getting to your question tonight, we will absolutely will. Um, 
is there a way to integrate these changes to existing pathways so we can start on this improved path sooner? I'll take this one. Um, there's actually two levels to answering this question. Um, the first is that we, in a way we've already started. When our um, standards of learning were revised in 2016, the standards of learning include both list of content at each grade level or course level, as well as a list of process goals that we call them process goals that are the application of mathematics skills and the and the way in which students interact with the mathematics. So those are things like communication, problem solving, reasoning, um, and critical thinking. And those are already part of what VDOE provides um, to, to school divisions and teachers and what divisions do within, within working with teachers to support um, the kind of teaching and learning that we're talking about. Furthermore, we are looking ahead to trying to bring in some of the pathways opportunities sooner to students who are already um, in middle and high school. There is already a curriculum development underway for the data science course, which is one of the advanced concept pathway uh, options. And soon to follow will be the mathematical modeling course and the financial modeling course. So those courses should be available to students within the next couple of years before the full initiative um, gets underway and the new standards are passed. And they'll be able to access those courses having completed the current uh, Algebra 2 course. Thank you, Jen. So uh, a few kind of questions coming together in this one. Is this dumbing down our curriculum and lowering our standards? I think I can answer that one. Um, the short answer is no. Um, that it really is a focus on how do we build rich understanding through the essential content that students need to be successful for the 21st century. Um, students need more than just rote memorization. They need to learn how to apply mathematics in deeper ways in more authentic contexts. Um, and that has been the focus of the work of the VMPI team. It isn't uh, dumbing down, it's actually more focused standards, more connected mathematics, um, and finding ways to help build students that uh, see themselves as doers of math, that understand mathematics, can solve problems and build connections. Um, so it is really a richer mathematics understanding that they need. Um, mathematics needs to be meaningful and purposeful for students. I will tell you from my experience in my K-12 education, it was more just rote memorization. I could learn to do it and I was good at that. Um, but there is so much more that they need to understand and be able to think about and do and apply in learning mathematics. And that's the focus um, that we have in the VMPI. Uh, we do have an upcoming, a couple of webinars in April and May that'll dig deeper into this question and be more explicit, but it really is about essential concepts um, that students need and advanced concepts to go into different areas and having a, a common foundation that every student has access to. Thank you, David. Uh, will the MPI affect learning for students at the elementary level? Mm, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, and it's a good question because it seems like we're talking about a high school initiative, but but it's really important to remember that that all of the curriculum are vertically articulates. So we'll have to be very important and deliberate to make sure that this is a, a K-12 initiative. Um, and so the initiative um, really supports instruction that's promoting student-centered learning. Uh, we want to make sure students have that time, that freedom to be independent in how they work and how they can think about mathematics. 
Um, we want to move, as David kind of talked about, to that, that higher level, that problem-based learning um, opportunity that, that students can have to, to think about, reason, justify, um, ask others about their thinking. Having that dialogue in a classroom um, provides a much more um, in-depth way for students to learn mathematics. It's not just about getting the right answer. It's about really knowing that you have a flexibility in your thinking to, to um, think differently than others do and get that right answer, but to understand and the process of the problem solving in and of itself. So we want students to be able to experience math um, that, that's not just about rules. It's not just about memorization, but instead to be able to grapple, grapple with ideas, construct strategies, make sense of things, um, learn at deeper levels and, and apply their mathematics. And that's, that's really across the board, but at the elementary levels um, and in, in the other, other levels that we're looking at for VMPI. Thank you, Tina. This one's sort of long, so hold tight, everyone. Will you also be emboldening the counseling and college and career centers in the middle and high schools to adequately support and provide guidance to seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th graders as to what path they should follow to achieve success? Can you read, can you read the beginning part of that again? I'm sorry. I would love to. Will you also be emboldening the counseling and college and career centers in middle and high schools to adequately support and provide guidance? We um, absolutely, uh, this Pathways initiative is really about not just developing opportunities for students, but, but in actually making it visible to them how math applies in the various parts of their lives and potential careers. Um, and importantly, in helping them become functional citizens as well as having a successful future. We are working, um, collaborating already with school counselors uh, and with specialists and teachers in other areas like career and technical education, STEM, uh, science departments, to identify ways that we can make connections, not just by telling students that this math would show up in, in their world, but by actually having interdisciplinary opportunities with other coursework that they may be engaged in. And one of the benefits of uh, of having grade level mathematics through 10th grade is that students are more likely to be in the same science course or the same social studies course. And we can make direct connections with the content that they're learning at each grade level. We are also working on having rich tasks in every grade level and, and making it visible to the students that when we did this task and learned about this concept, that this is related to a particular field of mathematics or a particular career, so that they can keep that in mind as they go through their essential concepts work in sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, and then make a choice um, for their upper high school grades for mathematics that makes sense to them and that they are interested in pursuing. Thank you. I, my daughter goes to ninth grade next year. Will she have an opportunity to experience this curriculum? And so Jen, you started that when you talked about how we've sort of already started making some changes with the 2016. Could you go back to that and give some thoughts about a ninth grader entering next year? Sure, I think uh, some of it depends on, um, the school division and and the flexibility to start offering courses as soon as possible. So we, I mentioned a data science class that's one of our upper level opportunities um, that will be piloted in the 22-23 school year, um, but not everywhere. Uh, and then more widely available in 23-24. So that would be uh, a ninth graders senior year. Um, 
the other two courses are also coming right behind it. So those might be opportunities depending on your division. Um, we are also getting ready to launch our professional development team and we'll be starting in advance of all of the new standards actually coming out to be doing professional learning with teachers about how to do the kind of deep learning that we're talking about, how to differentiate, how to um, push kids to go to go deeper and think about things differently if they're ready for that and how to support students who um, are not achieving on the grade level concepts just yet. So that work will also be happening in parallel with um, launching the actual new standards. So your daughter may benefit from that learning on the part of her teachers, even if the standards don't change until after she has graduated. So Jen sort of answered another question with that, um, but wondering if anyone wants to add in to, um, I'm a school principal, what can we start working on our teachers now so that we can be prepared for this change? Well, I, I can start answering that and then I can certainly, Jen or David, please add in. Um, I think that, that thinking about this idea of student-centered mathematics classrooms, um, is something that I think many schools are probably already working on, but beginning to think about how do we build that sense of, of a child thinking, I can do mathematics, I'm a knower and a doer of mathematics. Um, you'll see on our infographic that it says, everyone is a math person. Um, and so we as mathematicians, when someone says, oh, I'm not really a math person, that, you know, that kind of bothers us. We want to make sure that everybody sees themselves or sees value in why we learn mathematics. Um, so, so school principals and teachers can certainly right now today start to, to embed in their children that this, this is a um, discipline that you can learn, that it's valuable, that there's purpose in it. Um, and so that, that's something that, that we certainly can start working on right now. Um, other ideas, David, Jen? I would add that if that the resources, I think I mentioned this a little while ago, that the resources that VDOE has provided to schools are designed to promote the kind of thinking and learning that we're talking about. So there, there was a project uh, a little over a year ago to develop rich mathematical tasks for each grade level from kindergarten through algebra two um, there have been some projects this year in response to COVID to provide some uh, assessment tasks, I guess is not quite the right word, but some assessment resources for teachers to use with their students. Um, and I think speaking of, of understanding what we've seen this year with COVID and with um, schools and teachers needing to make decisions about really focusing on the most essential learning um, is that we've seen schools maybe teach a little bit less content this year because they had less time, but they focused really on what the most essential things were for students to learn at each grade level. Um, and that's raised the awareness that really thinking about that idea of essential is valuable. And that's something I think that teachers can start to do now if they haven't already um, and continue to do that even within the existing standards. And I'm gonna jump in here too. I think it's great to have a principal on as part of this call. Um, one of the things that I would do is say, start with some data analysis and that would be your data analysis. Like how are we doing? How are we doing at reaching each and every student and are, is what we think is happening really happening? If we're, you know, are, there, are we supporting all students to move forward in mathematics? Um, or are students saying, oh, you know, I sped up and then I dropped out. I finished early. I don't want to take math anymore. That's really probably one of the detriments that I see sometimes. Uh, too often our students um, accelerate through mathematics and in the end, they get close to the end and their feeling is, I don't want to do math anymore. And that so limits the opportunities they have going forward. 
And so try to look at those pieces because what we're wanting to do is make sure each and every student has that opportunity to, to grow in mathematics and, and how in what we're offering. Thank you all. I'm going to take a couple because I think they can be rather quickly. This is a Virginia Department of Education initiative that is in conjunction with the State Council for Higher Education or SHEV and the Virginia Community College System. Um, so it is the entire state, not just a single county. Uh, definitely everyone gets the same set of standards from the state and this would affect the entire state. Um, in the essential concept session, we will definitely outline curriculum modules that will provide a context for understanding the relevance of math in certain careers. So we will share information about that during the essential concepts session for certain. Um, Kristen, I'm wondering if you'd like to take this and, and maybe share your title because of that has great um, information to do with this. Given the definition of equity, I don't see the word disability listed. Would this group of people be included in your attempt to make mathematics more accessible? Hi, Shala. Yes, I would love to answer that question. Um, I'm Kristen Williams. I'm the mathematics and special education specialist and have been very involved from this initiative from the get-go when we started a couple of years ago. And I will say that uh, definitely students with disabilities are definitely at the forefront of our minds when we're, uh, when we're discussing and talking about all these proposed changes. Um, research shows that students with disabilities progress more when they are in an inclusive settings. So this initiative really supports that whole uh, movement. And we definitely are, are, are discussing and taking into consideration what the needs of students with disabilities are going to be and uh, make sure that we, we, we look at that very carefully in terms of, of all the way from K to 12. Thank you, Kristen. Um, we have had a reminder that there are SOL tests and that oftentimes drives instruction. Um, and what I can tell you is that there is a, an assessment person from BDOE on our committees to ensure that we're having that conversation with them regularly. Um, as we were all teachers, we all know that you often teach what is tested. And so um, we are definitely saying that we would like to see uh, assessments match our instructional strategy to the best of our ability. So, um, I would like to go with just this one more, I think. Um, why is there so much push to take college level material in high school? Many of these topics are covered in college. Does this not add to students' stress levels unnecessarily? I, I can start again, and I, I'm sure that Jen and David will wanna add in kind of their two cents as well. Um, so we, we have looked at a, a lot of data um, as part of you know, putting forth this initiative in terms of students um, who take some of their college level courses while in high school, whether it be dual enrollment or um, advanced placement courses. Um, and, and, you know, we certainly are going to continue to offer those opportunities for students. Um, but we also feel like there, there's this opportunity in K-12 education um, to allow students to have a little, little bit more um, of the application of mathematics. So we're, so we're trying to shift um, the, the, the uh, pendulum here from being focused um, on the algorithmic thinking that students have and being becoming more focused on the problem solving piece. Um, and so as we, as we develop these, um, these changes, we want to make sure that this, this mile wide inch deep sort of curriculum that you always hear about is really addressed so that students are learning essential content that, that gets them to more in-depth levels. So then they're ready to take more rigorous math, whether they take it in their 11th and 12th grade year, or they take it in college, um, but we want them to be prepared to be those deeper thinkers, not just um, those students that can answer answer a question um, correctly on a test. And I'm sure Jen and David, you can add much more eloquently to, to that than I can. I just wanted to um, share some appreciation for that question because most of the questions that we're, we're getting about um, 
college level is that it should be more and we should do it earlier. And um, I, I think this idea that there is this thing called college and there is college level math that happens in college is, is really valuable. And we see a lot of students who seem to be rushing to, to get through all of this stuff. And then we have data that suggests that they still end up um, taking those, those same introductory level college classes with everybody else. So I think um, thinking about student stress level is one element of it for sure. Um, but also just thinking about why is it that um, everybody wants to take high school math in middle school and college math in high school, but not English or science or um, art or whatever. Um, and, and so really thinking about what kind of math um, we can learn at a challenging, rigorous, and interesting level at each grade level, rather than just saying, well, I already know this and I'm bored, so I want to learn the next grade level now. Uh, and, and I think that's a lot of what we're trying to do with the um, Pathways Initiative. It's not to dumb it down, as someone mentioned before, but to actually make it more interesting and more relevant at each grade level. And building on that, you know, it really is about a coordinated um, path, a coordinated development. Earlier in this conversation, we talked about sort of the Dana Center and their launch years and about this transition piece. You know, one of the things we know is that if students stop taking math and then come back a year or two later, they've lost um, some of their facility in that. And so what we're trying to do are have smooth transitions and opportunities to a range of careers that they, um, that they wanna to take on. So it is really trying to build a, a smoother transition for students and actually make it available to more students as they leave high school. Thank you all. Um, now you've talked about the principal who said, what do we do with our teachers at our school individually? And, and now we have a district leader thought. Um, how will district leaders help to prepare for this transition? What do you do at the next level up from principal to get your district ready? Um, and will there be some professional development to district leaders about what to do to help others? You both are waiting for me to go first, but I'm going to let one of you go first this time. So I have some thinking time. <laughs> so I, I will just build on, on what I said before. We, we have just launched the um, professional development team as, as part of our broader um, group of folks from across the state that are working on this. And so we have people that are district leaders, as well as folks who work in um, teacher prep programs in colleges and universities across Virginia, starting to think about what the professional development looks like. And when, what, what my experience in, in being both a teacher and a di division leader in Virginia has been that VDOE does a good job of recognizing all of the different folks that need to learn and addressing those folks through the, the places that um, they access to them. So we have a group called the Virginia Council for Mathematics Supervision. That's district mathematics leaders. I'm certain there will be continued learning. We've already started digging into the MPI, um, continued learning through that channel. We have presented um, information to superintendent and assistant superintendent level um, leaders in the state. And um, and then of course, also reaching um, school-based administrators, teachers, uh, coaches. There's a Virginia mathematics coaches organization that works often with um, elementary and middle school uh, coach, uh, people that support teachers within schools. So all of those different levels, we will continue to reach out to and support them over again, over the next couple of years as we continue to work towards the new standards. And then once the standards are actually um, released and we go into implementation. 
Yeah, and I, I, I'll add just one more thing. I think that having um, the COVID-19 crisis has made us realize that we ha we can leverage technology a little bit more when it comes to um, helping teachers learn and, and, and being able to communicate with, with other school divisions. Um, so I think that we've had a lot of good lessons about there's nothing to, that can replace face-to-face -face learning, but we certainly recognize that we can leverage some of our technology um, in ways that we really didn't think were possible before. So I think that's gonna be a great tool for us as we move forward in helping uh, school divisions. Do you have any more and questions gonna, for? Oh, go oh, ahead, David, I'm sorry. I was gonna jump in on this one too, because I think the other piece and what I see, and I'm just honored to be part of this, this effort, is the collaboration across the state. And so find, as a district leader, how do we help to set up structures so that our, our leaders, our teachers are collaborating and supporting each other? So we're in this together and working together. It's not sort of working against each other or individually, but collectively coming together to improve um, the teaching um, for all of us. Thank you. So. Um, we mentioned briefly earlier about the other states in the nation who are involved in this initiative. And so um, could we briefly talk about that and, and other states and how they're doing and um, how we compare and, and what we've done with that? Um, Tina or David, I think, please. Yeah, I, I can start. Um, we, we talked earlier in the session about that Virginia is part of um, a cohort of 23 other states that are having discussions um, and the Dana Center um, from the University of Texas at Austin is, is um, helping lead that initiative along with, um, it's a consortium of 23 um, organizations or 17 organizations, I think it is. NCTM, who David works for is one of them. And we have been um, meeting for the past um, couple of years um, to discuss our progress. And of course, every state is different. They're in different places. So we all kind of discuss the things that we're working on. We try and, and, and support one another, collaborate with one another, um, and, and really help to develop each other's ideas. Um, most states are, are in initial planning stages, kind of like Virginia is. So, so we're all kind of moving forward together, but it's nice to know that we have other states um, that are working on this. And other states are in different places as well. Um, so I, I think David can probably speak to some of the more national um, pieces since he's more at that level. So I'll turn it over to him to, to, to answer. And thanks, Tina. And you're right, there are a number of states in different places on this. Um, you know, and I think that each state is looking at and sees the need to have a common uh, rigorous pathway for all students and then have a variety of pathways at the end as people decide. Um, but we're really very early in this. And so um, there's a few states that are just a little farther ahead of us and a lot of states that are um, catching up to where we are and working at this. So um, we convened some groups and the National uh, Council of Supervisors of Math brings some groups together to talk about these pieces and do that. But we'll continue to look and reach out um, and share our work and uh, see what others are doing. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to honor the time that we said that we would stick to tonight and it's almost 7.30. And thank you very much for all of your questions. And we didn't get to them all and we absolutely will. So um, Kristen, if you'll go to the next slide, then that will tell us about the next one and Tina can take us away. So we really do appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, we do have another session on April 13th. Um, it will be a live stream session like tonight. Um, so it'll start at 6.30. The same link that you've been using tonight to input questions and feedback, you'll be able to use that same link uh, for the April 13th session. And the link will stay open in between those two sessions. So you can certainly input uh, questions later as you think more about, about the initiative and what you have learned. Um, but we mentioned before that one of our goals 
goals is to collaborate with multiple stakeholders. And, and we want to um, advance mathematics education by making sure that we have the perspectives and the feedback from all, all different folks. Um, and so our community members and our parents are a big part of, of that stakeholder group. And we want to make sure that your voices are heard. So please uh, provide us your feedback. We really appreciate the opportunity, opportunity to let you do so. Um, have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, and we hopefully will see you on April 13th. Thank you.